Or you want it pretty good? <laughs> Great job. So when the season comes in, uh, those are the two bucks that I'm going to be going after. <laughs> you did it though. Right there. September 6th, Jake and I are headed for the first hunt of the year. We're driving down to Kentucky. It's seven o'clock now. We're gonna be getting there about one o'clock in the morning. I could not be more pumped. Season opens tomorrow. Can't wait to get in the tree. Well, we're all tucked in for the afternoon hunt. First hunt of the year. You know, there's always lots of kinks to work out, but I think we're good to go. This farm is about 100 acres. It's a creek bottom through two big CRP fields. And there's been quite a few mature bucks using the creek bottom. We're pretty excited to be sitting here. And uh, I'm not gonna be too picky if it's a mature buck. We're gonna make it happen. September 9th, Grant and I are set up for the afternoon hunt in the same set we've hunted the last two afternoons. Yesterday we got here at 3.30 and our primary target was standing under the stand right here. And the landowner has a cellular camera down here, and he got pictures of him again uh, this morning, just after legal shooting at like around six o'clock to six fifteen. And so he's no, we know he's still in the area, not too far. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble connecting to the network. That's unbelievable. That is terrible. That's first right there. They popped out of like 50 yards and he was coming in. And I stood up to grab my bow and get the GoPro going. And <laughs> somehow the side button on my phone got pressed in. And so Siri started saying she she's having trouble with her connection. He heard it and he went back to the south, so probably just blew our chance for today. We're trying a new spot. I actually set this stand up yesterday at lunchtime. We're only about a hundred yards off the road. And despite being right here off the road, it's just a big, thick bedding area. And there's a couple of trails that crisscross in front of this stand, so I thought I'd give it a try. Pretty easy to just sneak in, quiet. We got in clean, and our wind is blowing back, back over towards the road. camera light and we got skunked again tonight. Um, I know this heat's not helping us. I'm not sure how many more days I'm gonna hunt but I think I might try this spot one more time in the morning just because there was some morning activity on the cameras the very first hour and then I was checking the forecast I don't think the wind will be good for this spot again. Welcome to Midwest Whitetail. We've spent a lot of time talking about these scrape posts and the advantages that they offer to us around these little small food plots like the one I'm standing in here. I'm gonna put one up today and talk about the buck that I'm hoping to hunt in this spot. But before we do that, we're gonna to jump to Mike Reed in Kentucky. Maybe we just bring that fan. Just bring the fan and like help us. <laughs> Can we set it up below the stand? It's like, just, we'll just blow it straight up. Run a generator. Yeah. Run a generator. <laughs> it's the morning of Friday the 13th. 
and Jake and I just showed up to the same spot that I hunted yesterday afternoon. As you guys saw, um, we had a very bad sit and we got skunked. And uh, the, I was a little bit surprised because the deer had been so active on the camera the last few afternoons, but they've also been active in the morning. And there's one particular buck, a big five by one mature big body deer that's been showing up every morning, sometime between 30 minutes before daylight and 20 minutes after. And so we're here about an hour before he's been showing up. And uh, this spot's just about 75, 100 yards off the road. So we're gonna uh, get out the truck here, get, get ready and sneak in there. And hopefully he'll stay on the same pattern. You want them pretty good. <laughs> sit here very long this morning and take the stand down and we're going to drive to that other farm where the Siri buck was because he showed back up yesterday afternoon but don't have to now. We can uh, take this head down and go take a look at this deer. Well here he is, the culmination of our Kentucky hunt. I couldn't be more pumped to have this mature buck on the ground. As you guys uh, who have followed along this week have noticed, it's been a struggle. It's been really hot. We've had 100 degree temperatures. I was having a lot of fun on that one farm, hunting that Surrey buck and kind of building that story. But once I busted him out of there a couple times and we had hunted it five straight times, we, I felt like we had to make a move. We started pulling cards. There was mature deer in a few spots. And this was one of them. And I was a little bit nervous to hunt right here because it's so thick, it's difficult to film. Very, very thick, early successional growth, lots of saplings and we're only about 100 yards off the road. I used the uh, most recent information off the cameras to make a decision, come in and give it a try. So I actually hung this set two days ago at lunchtime and trimmed out a few shooting lanes. And then we came back in yesterday afternoon because they had been like clockwork in the afternoon down here. And uh, we didn't see a deer. And I thought, you know, we'll try one more time in the morning. This particular buck has been here almost every morning. And he's usually been here between you know, 5.30 and 6.30, right around that uh, first light. 
So a really cool buck, mature buck, one of the most mature bucks we've had on camera. Just a sharp A neck here. Big five by one, has some cool brow tines here. Looks like he might have busted his beam off in velvet or something. But I'd like to give a big thank you to the Noble family for letting me hunt their farm here in Kentucky. I really appreciate it. And also to my wife and kids. Lord knows I spent a lot of time thinking about deer hunting and out in the deer woods and planning for deer season, etc. I love you guys and I miss you. I can't wait to get back home and see you. We're gonna get this deer cleaned up and uh, get packed and head back to Iowa. It's about eight and a half hour drive and I wanna get back tonight because the opener for the urban zone is tomorrow. And so lucky for me, we can start game planning and get started hunting back in Iowa tomorrow and then October 1st is right around the corner. Well, September 25th, and Bill and I are all tucked in for our first hunt of the year. It's youth season here in Iowa, and it's been open since Saturday. And uh, it rained all day Saturday and Sunday, and between work and school, this is our first chance to get out. We're on our new farm right outside of town, so it's easy to access after school and work. We've had a fun year so far. Uh, me and the guys went down to Kentucky for early season in pursuit of a velvet buck. We had a great trip, it was really, really hot. Um, had some good encounters and ended up wrapping up the week with a nice mature buck. Been back in Iowa and I've been focusing on checking cameras around all the farms and then doing some uh, hunting in the urban zone. And on Monday we were able to get three does down, which was my target goal for this year in town to earn a buck tag for next year. So that's accomplished and now we can focus on youth season and then also a little bit of uh, urban hunting for a buck if we get the right weather. And then the main season will be opening up October 1st in town. Tonight, it feels really nice. We have a northwest wind. It's nice and cool. And uh, we're sitting over a big green bean field. And we're back where we can see this cove where my trail cameras have shown quite a few deer using this area. I also have a big and beastie plot around the corner. And there's lots of acorns. This area is completely secluded. There's lots of browse pressure on the beans. And uh, I just pulled this blind up here on Sunday. And uh, I didn't want to pull it in too far. I knew the deer would be in that cove and I could have pulled it farther in there for a closer shot, but I'm, I wasn't sure how the deer are accessing this field. I'm hunting a female. A doe? Yep. You have a doe tag? Yeah, I have a doe tag and a buck tag. And a buck tag. And we have a lot of mature bucks used in this area, probably mm -hmm. five different mature bucks. Yep. And so, whichever comes out first, huh? Mm -hmm. And so, you've been practicing and hitting the bullseye. Mm -hmm. So, wish me good luck. <laughs> After you shoot, you're going to count to three before you pick your head up. And what do we say? Aim small, miss small. Okay. Oh, you got her. You got her. <laughs> You got her, baby. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> I also couldn't really do one, two, three because it was like, boom, because all the smoke came out. Was it a little bit much? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you did it, though. <laughs> right there. You want to call mommy? Yeah. Let's call her. I got one! <laughs> I got <laughs> We're gonna go look Yay. here pretty soon, okay? We'll call you in when we find okay. it. Bye. Okay, sounds good. Love you. Bye. 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 <laughs> oh, oh. Hey, Bella. Hey, Bella. Bella. Good job, honey. <laughs> Pretty exciting, huh? <laughs> Look oh how big your head is. <laughs> That's a good grandma deer to get out of there. So great first sit. We had nice action. Took about an hour to get to come together and you got your dough down, so now you can feed the family. Yes! <laughs> Pretty exciting. She still has a buck tag, and so we'll continue to try to get out here in youth season and, yeah. and get after one of these bucks. 
and then otherwise you know October 1's right around the corner and we obviously got a lot of deer to chase this year and we're pretty excited for the season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's about a little less than 20. Keep it simple. Normally we've been using these wooden posts and drilling holes in those and sticking a tree branch into the hole and then using deck screws and screwing the branch in place. But somebody sent me this thing. It's called a Easy Scrape Bracket. Pretty handy little item. All you need then is the T-post. and They're easy to drive in the ground. Uh, makes a little bit of noise, but it's no big deal. It's a lot less permanent, pretty solid. You're not gonna get rubbing, of course, because they're not gonna rub this T-post. But if you're really just after the scrape branch, uh, it's a really nice system for, for putting that in. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the branch in and then position it. I mean, it's almost perfect right there. It's got uh, a couple of little threaded screws here to hold that branch in place. It'd be easy to swap it out if you decide halfway through the year you wanna put a different branch in there. Okay, so that's pretty well set. The height looks good. I'm just gonna lock that down. The whole idea in these little small food plots like this, or even bigger ones for that matter, even uh, large ag fields, is to give the deer, the bucks in particular, a reason to come closer to your blind or to your stand. In this case, I'm set up about just a little bit less than 20 yards from that redneck blind. It's a small enough plot that you're normally gonna get a shot in here. But that's not to say that a deer walking the length of it couldn't hug that other side and be 40 yards away. That's a lot tougher shot than 18 yards coming right over and checking this out. So in theory, over time, they start to adapt this as their scrape and they just can't come in here without checking it each time. It makes it a lot easier shot, you know, gets that body angle, perfect position, opens up the vitals. So that's why we've been doing this. You've been seeing a lot of people on Midwest Whitetail, whether it's on the main show, or, <clears throat> excuse me, or on the regional shows, the daily video blogs. We're putting these things out all over the place. Uh, just a little bit different take on it using the T-post. The, uh, the buck that I'm after here is the same deer that we saw here in 2017. It's a deer that we've called the bladed 10. Is that bladed 10? Three year old. Yep. He's definitely messed up. He's just got old crap hanging on him. Even right behind his ears, all gouged. That's about his fastest speed right there. And when he came in here in mid-November 2017, he was tore up. I mean, his whole neck had a giant gash, probably almost two feet long, running the full length of his neck. And it was infected, it looked bad, he could barely walk. I thought for sure that deer was gonna die. And he did not die. We saw him again late season. Uh, we found, and, and basically he looked like death warmed over then. But uh, we found sheds off him, and then he showed up again in 2018 as an eight pointer. And uh, we only saw him a couple times, got a lot of pictures of him early, saw him, you know, I think twice early in the season and then nothing after that. And now he showed up again in uh, this past summer as a 10 again. He looks almost exactly the same as he did back in 2017. So two years later, he hasn't really changed much, but uh, that's gonna be our, one of our targets, probably the number one. And I do believe that he's living here. I did pick up some pictures of him up on top of the hill in another food plot that we call the skinny plot. And he was there in daylight quite a bit, which tells me that he's living close by. The skinny plot's not more than probably 300 yards maximum as the crow flies. And we had some pictures of him on other cameras too, but it was during the middle of the night, you know, well after, uh, you know, dark. And, and in those cases, you figure the deer is not living right in those places. You know, he's, he's having to travel to get there. So anytime you can get pictures of a buck during daylight, you got to figure you're pretty close to where that deer lives. So I think he's right here. When the season opens, we're going to hunt that deer either up in the skinny plot, if the wind is right for that, or down here in this little uh, location and down in this bottom nearby. And um, our chances of getting on that deer are pretty good. I mean, I think we got a fighting chance on the bladed 10. Another one is that big eight pointer that we filmed back in August. He's been showing up pretty consistently on cameras showing some daylight activity. We've got him narrowed down to two different spots where we think he spends most of his time. So when the season comes in, uh, those are the two bucks that I'm gonna be going after. I'll have some updates for you next week. Well, that's it for this week. Uh, we've covered you know, some, 
some pretty good stuff here and I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail. And remember to always dream big.